Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 7 for January the 12th, 2020. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Dedicating the Temple of God. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled, I Promise. The devotion reading is taken from Psalm uh, 132, verses 1 through 5, and also verses 11 through 18. Our background scripture is taken from uh, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, uh, verses 14 through 21, and also uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter 6. We'll be studying today from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8. Uh, verses 14 through 21. Our key verse reads, He said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father David. And that is taken from 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, verse 15 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to examine how Solomon's building of the temple fulfills a promise God made to Solomon's father David. Secondly, to appreciate that God keeps promises even if the fulfillment takes many years. Thirdly, to uh, rejoice wholeheartedly when God promises, when God's promises come to pass. We have uh, two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, God Promised. And then the second outline is entitled, God Performed. And we certainly thank and praise God for uh, a brand new year. Uh, we certainly are looking forward to God's promises uh, being fulfilled corporately uh, within the body of Christ. and also individually in our own lives as God has spoken uh, to us and promised uh, particular things that he would do in our lives and it's very important that we look forward uh, to the promises of God being kept uh, even in the midst of uh, adversity. We have a very lengthy biblical context. I want to read just a portion of this uh, from um, our lesson quarterly and then we're going to read a little bit of context from our lesson standard. But the biblical context is as follows. Solomon's blessing of the people is a loose use of the word uh, verses 14 and 55 since it was typically priests um, and not kings who were authorized to pronounce a blessing on the people. You can see that in Numbers the book of Numbers chapter 6 verse 23 and also Leviticus chapter 9 uh, verse 22. So when the law and historical context are considered, Solomon was really expressing a blessing uh, to the Lord. And then over in our lesson standard, uh, we want to share a little bit of this context. Um, the faithful God of Israel had established David's son Solomon on the throne of Israel. You can see that in 1 Kings chapter 2 uh, verse 12. Uh, so God then enabled Solomon to complete the project his father had given to uh, given him to build a house of worship for the Lord and you can see that in 1 Chronicles chapter 22 uh, verses 6 through 13. So the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 uh, verses 1 through 13. This was uh, last week's lesson recounted the opening scenes of uh, the dedication ceremony for the grand temple Solomon had built in Jerusalem uh, for the God of Israel. So today's account continues to examine that ceremony. So there's a parallel account that uh, can be found in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 6 uh, verses 3 through 11. So we hope that you will Follow us with your Bible and, and be prepared to um, take notes. Um, and certainly we want you to uh, record these scriptures that we might be able to uh, look at them at a later time if you are unable to look at them uh, as we go through this lesson. But this is a beautiful historical account 
of what God wanted to do. If you if you recall any part of this narrative, uh, it goes back to uh, David uh, 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 wanting to build God a temple, uh, wanting to do something for God. God had blessed him through many uh, campaigns, had blessed Israel. And so uh, after consulting with the prophet Nathan concerning his plans, uh, uh, Nathan told him that uh, to do all that was in his heart because God was with him. And so we learned later on that that was really not the case, uh, even though God uh, uh, applauded uh, what David wanted to do in uh, building a temple for him. But God was interested and was uh, going to build a dynasty through the Davidic line. So this is a very different uh, plan structure, if you will. And so as we look at this lesson today, uh, these promises as Nathan had received a vision uh, by the Lord as to uh, what he did not want David to do, but who would actually build the temple. So we have arrived at our ceremony today, uh, at least in last Sunday's lesson, we talked about uh, uh, the temple being built and the ceremony uh, taking place and uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, uh, being brought in to the temple. Uh, but today we're dealing with Solomon's speech, if you will, at the completion of the work of the temple and the Ark being brought in. Uh, and so these are some things that uh, Solomon had to say uh, as we learn through our biblical context. He was really thanking and praising God and uh, being appreciative of these things that had come to light uh, uh, through uh, the Lord's hand and certainly through his father David. So we want to get into these two outlines and then we're going to come back to share some things that, that, that I saw. Uh, in my study of this lesson that I think that are, are relevant uh, for uh, any uh, generation and certainly it was important in the context of our lesson but I think that uh, as we look at this account it's important that we know what the promises of uh, God are concerning uh, our lives uh, concerning the church concerning the people of God uh, and then the second thing that I, I found that uh, David did in this lesson or prior to uh, uh, Solomon taking the throne was to leave something for the next generation. We're going to talk about that. But our first outline is entitled God Promise. And this is taken from 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 14 through uh, 17. I want to read this from the NIV translation. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. Then he said, Praise be to the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father David. For he said, Since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city uh, in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built so that my name might be there but I have chosen David to rule my people Israel and then verse 17 uh, my father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord the God of Israel so here uh, Solomon is recounting uh, these things that have been revealed to him and they certainly have been passed on to him by his father David and and what I, I, I found that was extraordinary uh, in terms of King David he could have after learning that uh, his plans were overruled if you will by by God himself uh, David could have gone and uh, stuck his head in the sand he could have become bitter uh, he could have uh, 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 taken a negative approach with his son, but even after he learned that he would be uh, uh, resting uh, with his forefathers as the Lord 
God had revealed to him that he would he would not see this temple come to pass uh, David saw fit not only to convey uh, all of the uh, 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 experience or the wisdom if you will that a father would convey to his son David also initiated the process of building this temple uh, in assembling the things of, of uh, for his son who was young and who was inexperienced and uh, uh, but David uh, uh, wanted to help his son in every respect uh, so when he came to power when he came to the throne uh, 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 that David would be leaving that he would have a, a, a an excellent chance of succeeding and you know the scripture reference for my points that I'm making are uh, taken from first Chronicles chapter 22 if you would read that and also from first Chronicles chapter 29 particularly uh, uh, verses 26 through 30 uh, but we have to uh, assume the responsibility as the people of God to leave something for the next generation uh, I'm sure uh, uh, now that I understand my parents rearing and teachings over the years I'm sure they had a better perspective of God and who he was and what God wanted him to uh, them to do in their children's lives and we didn't know that uh, uh, and we didn't understand that and we didn't come to appreciate that until we got older but I can honestly say to you today that my parents even though they are yet living they have prepared their children to assume or to take the ministry to where they may not be able to take it and this is what uh, uh, we have to learn how to use the promises of God not just for our season but for the next season or for the next generation we must have the wherewithal to see to it that the next generation uh, is in, indoctrinated with the promises of God so uh, uh, these individuals the descendants if you will the next generation would have some clarity and some some goals if you will some uh, precepts about what God is expecting of them and this is the format by which we should raise our children in addition to the practical things uh, that we would teach them so there is a, a generational aspect uh, of this lesson so it's important that we pass along to the next generation uh, uh, of the promises of God so uh, every generation should live in the hope of God's promises uh, but if that generation uh, uh, that uh, uh, comes after us does not have the hope and does not have the understanding of God's promises what kind of life will they have uh, will they have lives of, of, of hope or hopelessness but the first epistle of John chapter 3 I want to deviate just a little bit since we have just two outlines today and I want to go there very quickly this is a very familiar scripture to us but I want to read this the first epistle of John chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 3 and this will uh, pair with the uh, remarks that I'm making about uh, this uh, hope for the future the Bible says behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him verse 2 beloved now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and this is where I want to hang my hat on verse 3 and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure if you look back at the scriptures that I gave you uh, from the book of first Chronicles chapter 2 and 29 uh, and chapter 29 and, and look at the language uh, 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 the tone that 
David is using with his son and the preparations. David has armed his son with hope. Uh, David has uh, uh, armed his uh, uh, son with how to be successful, how to keep the commandments of the Lord, how to live in the promises of God. And this is where uh, every uh, 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 generation uh, should be responsible for this type of uh, platform. And so this uh, lesson for me is very relevant, not just in the context of which it is given, but we can glean something here that uh, we can use for our culture today. But the congregation, back to our context here of the verses we read from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, uh, the congregation is in the midst of worshiping God as his presence fills the temple. So this is truly an amazing sight. And so one of, uh, of which the people had never experienced in their lifetime. And while clouds represented God's presence in the past, nothing quite like this had ever occurred. You know, so many of us, so many people, so many family members, so many uh, 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 family structures have never experienced God's power, God's presence. They have never experienced the promises of God. They're living outside or as the uh, uh, elders taught us years ago, living out of the ark of safety. Uh, but this congregation, because Solomon has taken the reins at this time and Solomon is blessing and praising the Lord, uh, uh, and he understands that he represents the fulfillment of a promise that God made to his dad, his father David. So it is incumbent on Solomon now that he has the reins and the understanding and the promises. Now he has the uh, responsibility of holding his position holding it with integrity, holding it in light of the promises of God, and then passing it to his uh, uh, predecessors. So this is how we move and shape culture. This is how we move and shape society. This is how we move and shape families. This is how we move and shape the fulfillment of God's word. Uh, if, you, if we were to follow this same a concept, if you will, into the New Testament and look at what Jesus did when he came uh, to earth. Jesus uh, enlisted 12 men and he passed along everything that his father taught him to his disciples. And then as he got ready to ascend, uh, he uh, 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 promised that he would give his disciples the Holy Spirit who would lead and guide them in all paths of truth. And we know from every gospel writer that there is a section uh, called the Great Commission. So not only did Jesus arm his disciples into carrying on the teachings and the principles and the, the things that they had been taught, he put them in a position that, that they would be commissioned to nations and they were supposed to teach the nations what he had taught them. The same concept uh, is played out in the New Testament, if I can use that phrase. So this is nothing new, but it's, it is profound that we carry this out because if we don't leave anything for the next generation, not just the practical things, they have no path to go forward. And, and so many of us today, if we look around in our culture today, how much hopelessness do we see in our societies today? Why are we killing one another and killing out uh, the promises of those individual lives, taking the lives of the expectations of those individuals that they will never have have again. So this is very important that we embrace this concept. Uh, and so uh, 
King Solomon stands and sets his face toward the people of the congregation and blesses them as they gather to stand and receive this blessing. So we can often want God to move in our lives and then we are in awe when he moves in an unexpected manner. So uh, this setting here, this ceremony here, God has blessed this congregation with his presence. The leadership at this time uh, through Solomon is, is doing everything right. He's connecting all the dots. He's connecting his past. He's connecting his presence, his present, and he's connecting his future. He has everything the way uh, you would expect uh, the congregation to draw from. They are watching him and they are listening to the, the message that he is speaking over them. And so Solomon confirms that what the people are experiencing is a fulfillment of God's promises to them to fill his house. So he continues to testify about God's goodness by explaining God's decision to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. You know, we, we have to pray for clarity. We have to pray for an understanding. We have to pray for uh, 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 the wisdom of God to overshadow us so we would understand purpose. Solomon is explaining to the people who may not know this is where we are today. We are here because God chose us. We are here because God blessed us. We are here because God uh, brought us out. And we are here to magnify the Lord. We are here to bless the name of our God. And so, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very important that we set the tone for where God wants to take the people. And I think that as we assemble ourselves, even in our local congregations, uh, we should be listening for that. What does God want us to do? So, it, it finally, it says here, to this day, God does not choose a place but he chooses people. He does not anoint sanctuaries, but he anoints servants. It was David who had it in his heart to have a place of worship and a house for the ark of God. So it is good to remember the shoulders on whom we stand as Solomon does in remembering his father David. God's house will be filled with more than just nice things and people. It will be filled with God's presence and the people's praise. Isn't that awesome to know? Isn't that beautiful to understand? We are standing on the shoulders of people who have marked the territory before us. Uh, uh, the patriots, if you will our grandmothers and grandfathers and mothers and fathers who have paid the way and some have gone on to be with the Lord but they left us with a map they left us with some instructions they left us with a path to go forward on how to please God and how to be purposeful in life and so and if we have these footprints we ought to be able to follow them question is asked here in the quarterly God has promised to dwell uh, in his sanctuary how do you sense the presence of the Lord among your congregation I thought that was an interesting question and immediately I thought about the the the, the concept of love so if if there is an in working let me say this if there is an in working of God in us there will also be an outworking of love. And I want you to go back to, if you have time, to the first epistle of John, uh, chapter 3. We were just there. And I want you to look at uh, verses 10 and 11 and also verses 16 through 18. Uh, when we exhibit the kind of love that God uh, uh, has for us and have shown us by coming into this world, and dying and giving his life uh, uh, for our sins, we ought to be able to uh, uh, emulate that type of love amongst one another. That's how I can tell. Uh, when God is in you, then we ought to love one another. I can tell God is in you when we know how to forgive 
one another. I understand that you have clarity about who God is when you seek paths of peace and not be authors of confusion. So there are ways, there are practical ways that we could tell uh, basically how we treat one another and how we honor the word of God, how we reverence him uh, and the people of God. Uh, and so this is very important that we understand uh, that we are responsible for brotherly, uh, brotherly love. We are responsible for peace in the house of God and peace among ourselves. We are responsible to demonstrate to the world just like Israel was uh, 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 saddled with the responsibility when God brought them out of Egypt uh, and they wandered in the wilderness but prior to uh, 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 taking the promised land of Canaan uh, God specifically told them through Moses do not mix with those worldly individuals do not uh, give your sons and daughters in marriage do not mix with these foreign idols that you have not known who have uh, uh, not uh, experienced uh, you have not experienced them they didn't bring you out and so Yahweh was telling them at that time I was the God of your salvation I delivered you so we know that evangelistic approach fell in the makings because Israel mixed so we have a responsibility to uh, 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 to exemplify the characteristics of Christ in the certainly amongst God's people but certainly in the world at large this is our commission this is our charge I hope that you remember that and those scriptures and our last outline is entitled God performed this is taken from first Kings chapter 8 verses 18 through 21 again from the NIV translation but the Lord said to my father David you did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have succeeded David, my father, and now I sit on the throne of Israel just as the Lord promised. Uh, and so I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Verse 21. And I have provided a place for the ark um, uh, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with our ancestors when he brought them out of Egypt. Do you know, I've said this over the years. Everybody that comes out of the wilderness, if you will, of sin, you have a history with God I believe when you came out of your sins that God gave you instructions I believe that I believe that he told you don't go back that's what I believe I believe he reminded you that he was the one that got you off of your sick bed I believe that I believe that he the, he is the one that revealed to you that he has been keeping you every day of your life. I believe you understand that. So what I'm saying to you today is that Solomon knows the story. You have to know the story. I have to know the story. And then I become a steward of the story. I have to keep the story. I have to remember the story. I have to keep it afresh. No matter what life throws in my way. I have to keep it in the midst of all of these different things that are distractions around us. And this is all Solomon is doing. He's letting the people know that I know where I got my start from. I know why I'm sitting on this throne. Uh, it's not not because of who I am but it's because God promised to put me here through my father and so here I am so now I owe him everything and so he understands he's in he is strategically been placed in a position over God's people by God himself and I don't care what it is that you're doing today in the house of God I just want you to know today God has strategically placed you where he wants you to be and it's important that even as you suffer in that position that you bear fruit in that position it doesn't matter uh, 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 what people say it doesn't matter what people think it doesn't matter how much somebody uh, 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 doesn't like the fact that you are where you are the fact remains that God put you there 
This is the kind of anointing that Solomon has over his life. And this is why the anointing is falling over onto the people, uh, the blessing. But I like this part in here uh, in verse 21. Solomon understands that he has to have a place to keep God's word. What is that place today? Your heart. You are the container now you are the ark, if you will, of the promises of God. Your mind, your spirit, you have to remember. And so uh, uh, not only did Solomon build this temple, he keeps that uh, uh, a place for the word of God in the midst of the temple. And we have to live in such a way that we keep a place for what God has said to us. Don't let everything, every wind and doctrine take the place where the word of God should be. Don't let everything that this world has to offer take the place of God's word in your life. I'm talking to me now because it's something that we all have to deal with even as children of God. We all face temptations every day that come against the place that God has established in us and the place that God has established us to be. We all have to suffer through uh, 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 myriads of, of things that come against us, but I just want you to know that God put you right where he wanted you to be, and you stay there until the Lord moves you uh, uh, to another place. You stay there because that place will bear fruit because God put you there. That place will not remain desolate. That place re will not remain stagnant. That place that God put you is going to bear fruit because God is a promise keeping God. He is putting Solomon and has put Solomon in a place for success. He is going to do well, uh, well because God knew before Solomon came on the scene told David, your son is going to do this, he's going to do that, he's going to do well, I'm going to be a father to him, I'm going to raise him, he's going to, he's going to be my choice. And so that's very important for understand because God knows the, the future. He knows the plans. He knows the purposes. So it doesn't matter. And sometimes we like to move because things don't seem to work in our time frame. But, but, but I want you to understand, just keep that place that God put you in. Keep that place for the word of God. Don't ever forget what the Lord told you initially that he would do in your life. You got to remember that and thank God for the Holy Spirit because he will remind you time and time again of what the Lord has said in your life. So I believe that. I have understood that. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord uh, over the years telling me the same thing that he told me years ago. And what I love about God, he will not change his mind. You are that person. You are his choice. You are his anointed. You are the one that he called for the role that you are playing uh, uh, in the ministry and, 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 and even in your uh, 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 practical life. Uh, uh, God is the one that allows these doors to open. And, and so many times we try to run away from the place that God has established us to be. Solomon cannot get out of this. He cannot get out of this position. It has already been pronounced. Even when his father was trying to do it, God told David, you are not going to be the one. You will, you will not stay on this throne. I'm going to take you out of this life, give you rest, and I'm going to raise someone else. I'm going to start this dynasty through you, but it won't be you. That's something to think about. I enjoy this lesson, and I think it's something that, that history can teach us if we're willing to learn from it. So I want to move now to our closing prayer. Dear Lord, help us to be Christians of our word. The sacrifice of service might hurt, but the pain caused because of broken promises runs deeper. Help us to forgive and seek forgiveness from others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope that you will go back and read and enjoy this lesson until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.